Statistics and Excel, Roulette Probability Example, Part Number 8. Get ready and some coffee, because if we want to get futuristic, we need statistics and Excel. Because pens don't work in the future unless they're just, unless you use them to like shoot lasers out of or something. That's the only thing pens are good for when in the future. Here we are in Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts, a must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Well, if you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you can start from this point, just building the tables as we go from here, or possibly look at this from a theory standpoint for probability, statistics, or the roulette wheel in general. If you do have access to this workbook, there's three tabs down below, example, practice, blank, example, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells, so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet and we'll be continuing with the blank part of the worksheet, practicing our Excel formatting as we go. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going and what we have done thus far. We're looking at the good old roulette wheel, looking at it from the prospect or the angle of probability, remembering that whether or not you like the idea of gambling or using the roulette wheel, these games of chance have been built on the basis of probability and therefore are great tools to learn probability, which once we have under our belt, we can then apply to many different things within, say, statistics, for example. So we're looking at the roulette wheel. We have many different things that we can be betting on within the roulette wheel. Most of them are basically independent from each other. So we started out thinking about the expected value, which has two factors. One is going to be the payout, what's going to be paid if you win. And the second is going to be the odds of winning. And when we take those things into consideration and consider the different things we could bet on, we typically get to an expected value for most of the items on the wheel at 0.0526 about or 5.26 cents average loss per bet. Remembering that's kind of counterintuitive because you're not going to lose five some cents each bet because you're betting a minimum of a dollar typically and so therefore you're going to win a dollar or lose a dollar or depending on the payout however over time over the long run we're averaging the 5.26 percent and now or cents per bet and now we're working on testing that empirically which we have done for a couple of them we'll take a look at that shortly practice tab has these pre-formatted cells so you can uh, input the data with less Excel formatting. We're on the blank tab though, because we're going to do the Excel formatting. You can see here we've calculated the expected value for betting on red or black, and then betting on the first 12 numbers, betting on one number, even though the payouts are wildly different, the expected value is basically the same over the long run. The next thing we took a look at is like is to say, well, what would happen? Let's consider it from the angle 
of us betting two times. So we have a strategy. We're thinking about the betting on red and black, which could be similar to the betting on even or odds, for example, because you have the similar kind of probabilities of outcome. And we know that the payout is uh, one for one. If we were to do that, if we have a strategy that we're gonna bet on the same color each time, we'll just say red. So no matter what happens on the first one, we're gonna, re we're gonna bet red on the second one. Well, what are the odds for each of those outcomes to happen? Well, on the first one, because the two spins are independent, the odds are 18 out of 38 to win, 20 out of 38 to lose because we have 36 numbers plus the two zero and double zeros on there for a total of 38 numbers. And half of the 36 numbers are black versus white. So our black versus red. Uh, so we have then the 18 to win, whether you choose black or red, and then uh, the 20 to lose because of the two extra numbers, the zero and the double zero. If we compare that to the payout, we get $1. If we bet a dollar, we're going to win a dollar. So they put a dollar on top of the dollar that we bet, right? And we take the $2. One was the initial amount that we put on, on the table and we win the amount that they give us. And then if we lose the dollar, they take the dollar and that comes out to an expected value of 0 0.0526. If we were to bet it again, whether we win or lose betting on either red or black the first time, then we have the same odds for the second time, which are independent of the first roll, which once again would come out to a probability of winning of that 0.0562. I'm sorry, the expected value of winning. So if we think about those two bets happening, we can either say, well, we would expect on average for every two bets that we lose twice that expected value or 10 cents or 0 0.1053, which I can calculate this way, or I can think about those two expected values and add them uh, together. So let's try to analyze that and say, okay, let's create our statistical uh, empirical calculations here and try to think how we can run the numbers so that so that we can be counting each of the two bets that happened. Now, if we're betting on red or black, we have this technical issue here once again that some of the numbers are going to be, if I go back on over here, red and black, they didn't just put like the even numbers as uh, red and black because they wanna have two different things to bet on the even and the odds versus the reds and blacks, even though the chances are basically the same because they took these 36 numbers. And if you take the even or odds, obviously you get 18 out of 36 will be even or odd out of the added two numbers, the zero and the double zero, not 36 out of 38. And then the reds and the blacks, they don't want to put those exactly on the same even and odd because that'd be the exact same thing. So they kind of switched up, which are even and odd for the reds and blacks, but it still comes out that half of the numbers of 36 are red ver red or black, 18 to 18. And the other two, of course, are the double zero. So we have 38 total numbers. So if we just want to look at it statistically, we can we can kind of just say, okay, what are the odds that we get like the, the first 18 numbers out of the total 38 numbers and we can look at that statistically or we can try to say can i come up with something that's going to mirror or match the red and black numbers on the roulette wheel depends what your objective is if i wanted to come up with a count that could match the actual numbers on the wheel one way we might do that is to create a, a lookup table possibly i'd call it an x lookup table as we did in a prior presentation so we might say, hey, look, the red numbers, if I just go through and list the red numbers, they're one, two, three, they're one, three, five, seven, nine, 12, 14, 16, da, 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 da. I think I have those right. There's 18 of them. And then if we were to list out the black numbers, we would just count them and list out the actual numbers that are black on the wheel. That comes out to 18. And then we have these two numbers that are green numbers. Now, it's going to be difficult for me to, to use a count function if I was to roll the wheel and then say, hey, give me all the results that are one of these numbers, right? Because I'd have to say, give me the result if it was a one and if it was a three and if it was a five, that's going to be tedious of a formula. 
it would be easier if I assigned them a number that is in order. So I'm going to assign them the numbers of just saying the number one is a one, a three is going to be coded as a two for our purposes on the, the random number generation. And a five is going to be a three for our random ge number generation purposes. Now, now, so that's going to be the idea. We're going to use the same concept in what we're going to do this time. So I'm going to copy this over. Let's copy this whole thing. And we're going to say, I'm going to use that same idea over here. And uh, we'll just paste that. Let's paste it right here. Uh, let's paste it right here. Boom. Now I need to have a skinny CT. Let's make it the same skinny as this C, whatever that is. And we're going to say home tab clipboards, make a skinny CT, make a skinny. All right. And we're going to call this the expected value to win two times betting on, we're just going to say red. All right. Duh, duh. And let's make that black and white home tab font group black and white okay so there we have that and all right so so now i can make this one a skinny let's make this a skinny and then what we're going to do is we're going to say if we look at our our buckets we have the the red numbers now are going to represent numbers one through 18. now again i'm looking at these numbers one through 18 here because now i can count those numbers but these actual numbers represent these red numbers so if i got a seven then i'm going to code switch that in excel to be that's actually a 14 which is red on the wheel which may or may not matter to us here because of course we're really just kind of focusing in on the statistics and the odds but you might use that if you're going to make a game out of it or something so we have black so black is going to be, I'm going to say 19. So this will be this plus one, 19. So right there, that's where the black ones start. And then that's going to go up 18. So it's going to be plus uh, 18 minus one, because it's including that 19 there. That gets us to 36. As you can see here, uh, uh, 36 is the last one here, right? And then we have these two that are representing zero and double zero which in our numerical count is going to be 37 and 38 so 37 and 38 so i'm going to say uh this will be green is going to be equal to this plus one and then this will just be equal to this plus one so there's all of our buckets that we're going to be dealing with uh so let's make this one black out here so i can see it okay so let's make those a little thinner so there's our buckets. So now I can say, okay, and, and let's make that black and white. So I'm gonna say, or no, let's make it bordered and blue. If you don't have that blue, it's in the more colors, standard, and there's our color wheel. Okay, boom. All right, so now I'm gonna make another skinny. So let's make a skinny over here and we'll make the skinny right there and then Let's make this black again so I can see my headers extending. It's a long header this time. All right, let's put our, let's do the count here. So we're going to say the count. How many times are we going to spin this wheel to test this out? I'm going to make this black, white, and center it. Let's do the good old 500 times. One, two. We're going to spin this thing 500 times again. And Excel's like, I'm getting my, my arms getting tired of spinning this wheel. But no, Excel can spin it all day long. And he does it like, like immediately. It just spins it 500 times so fast you don't even see it happening. It's crazy. So let's bring this down. 500 spins of the wheel. And we don't even get to watch it spinning around. Isn't that part of the game? It's supposed to mesmerize you as it spins, as it spins round. So you not, don't you feel a little dizzy when they take your money? Uh, so it's not so bad. So let's say we do the rand one, rand number two. Just like the dentist giving you that happy gas as he drills on your teeth like a torturer or something. It's not so bad if you got the happy gas. Let's make this black, white, and center it. Okay. So now we can do a random number generation. So I'm going to do two rolls here 
I'm gonna do two rolls. So we'll just do random, random between, once again, one comma and 38 numbers. 36 numbers, two numbers black and, or, or two zeros, zero and double zero, enter. Let's copy that to the right, format, and then, and then double click copying it down. Just double click that fill handle, which is really like a fill button because you just push it instead of grabbing the handle. And then control shift down. They can't keep up with the advances in their naming conventions in Excel to keep it making sense. So I make up names myself to help them out. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be, uh, let's do control shift up and control down. Oh no, I got too fancy with the keystrokes. Let's do these and then control shift down. Let's make that blue and bordered. Home tab, font group, bordered and blue, border blue. And then if these will change every time, so you could copy this and paste ecstatic one, two, three to have a static, uh, hold on a sec, I have to paste it up here. One, two, three, to have a static number, but uh, we don't need that because we're gonna, we're gonna deal with it changing. We're, we're getting better with life, man, and stuff changes all the time. And we're like, whatever, I'm rolling with it. I'm rolling with it, I don't even care. Let it change. Let it do what it, let it do whatever it's gonna do, man. I'm, I'm down with it. I'm just gonna roll with the, the flow. Okay, so then let's make another skinny. Now, before we do that, I noticed that I just messed up this thing down here because I pasted this, uh, I should have pasted it over a little bit. So let me fix that. So in other words, this one here, I should have the total column over here. So I'm gonna put my cursor on column C W uh, C U right click and I'm gonna insert. So we insert another column and then I'll make this column wider and I have my totals over there and they weren't colored. That's why I think they got messed up. So I'm gonna go to the home paintbrush. Let's format paint that. Let's make this blue and bordered, blue and bordered. And then my difference over here is uh, this minus this. And hopefully that is correct. Da, da. Okay. And that should be fluctuate. Okay. So back to our current thing. So let's go over here. And so what I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to make another one, which is going to be account. So what I'm looking for is for both of these rules, because this is what we calculated the statistics to happen to be to be what are the odds that they both come out like red, which we're indicating from our table as uh, one through 18, that one through 18 representing this number system, one through 18 being red, which if we code switched, say a 12 would actually be a 23, right? Hopefully that makes some sense. So I'm gonna go over here and say, this is gonna be uh, black, white, and center. So I'm gonna say, okay, of these two rolls, uh, I, I, want, I want to count it if they both came out to be red, which is represented by a numbers between one and 18. Okay, so how can we do that? We could, we could use a count if, we're gonna use a count ifs formula to do this. Let's give us a little bit more room here. It's gonna be equals count ifs with an S. So we need that S on there, tab. A little bit different formatting than just the count if because there's multiple conditions. The first criteria range, I wanna look at these two numbers, have them less than 18, but the first one, I'm just gonna look at the range here. That one number is the range. I'm gonna say comma, what's the criteria? I want it to be in this bucket from numbers uh, one to 18. Now they're whole numbers, so the easiest way to do that is to say it has to be less than 19. So I'm gonna say less than, and I'll point to this number to reference to our buckets, less than 19. Excel's not gonna like that because of the, the, uh, this being a text, this less than. So I have to put brackets around a text field. I'm sorry, not brackets, quotes. And then I have to tie it to the next argument with an and, and it should be okay then to go. Then I'm gonna say comma, the next criteria, I have to select the range again. It's not gonna be the first range, it's gonna be this cell. The range is just that one number. And then I'm gonna say comma, it also needs to be less than 19. There's the 19. It's not gonna like that because, oh, hold on a sec, less than 19, because I have this less than, which is a text field. Therefore, I need quotes around it and I need to tie it together with an and to the next argument. 
I can close that up. Let's see if it gives us a result. It does. These two are less than 18, therefore it counted it. That's the idea. If I go in and I get one, now these two are greater than 18, it didn't count it. Let's copy it down, but before we do, I have to double click and say, will this count down okay? These two will move down as we copy down, but this one, I don't want it to move down. Therefore, I need to make that cell, which is CZ4 absolute. So here's a CZ4, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and number. Here's a ZC4, CZ4, F4 puts a dollar sign before the letter and number telling Excel, don't move that down as I copy it down. Put my cursor back on that cell, double click the fill handle, boom. Let's check it out. So this one doesn't have both of them under, doesn't have both of them under, we're getting a zero. So these look properly calculated. This one includes the 18, cause that's included and it has a 12, it counted it. This one has two under 18, it counted it. So it looks like it's doing what we would expect it to do. So out of the two rolls, this is where we would win both times having both of them come out uh, under 18, which we're representing as red. Let's say control shift down here and let's put home tab font group brackets and make that blue. All right, and then I'm gonna make another skinny. Let's make a skinny from here. Home tab clipboard skinny to the DG skinny. And let's do a uh, the the count. So then if I count these, uh, we're gonna say how many did we actually get that basically meets those two conditions. They were red, we win both times. Equals the sum of these, control shift down, enter. So it happened 106 times out of a total spins of 500 spins. So the percent that it happened was 111 out of 500 spins. Let's make that a percent number group percentify to recognize and add some decimal. What are the odds that we came up with for that to actually happen? We calculated that over here. We said, do, 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 do. let's go back on over here. And we calculated our odds for both of them to come up. Now the odds are a little bit kind of tricky to calculate. You, you could say, well, to win both, we said it has it's going to it's going to happen 22.44% of the time to lose both 27.7% of the time and we let me first select this one to win both 22.44% of the time and let's just analyze that a little bit more in depth just so we get the idea of it so if i go back on over here what we said is we said well these are two independent spins so to to win the odds of winning each of them was to win 47, 37, to lose 52, same for the second spin. Now, what, what are the odds to win both of them then? We can look at it this way. The odds to win both would be the, the first odds to win the first one times the odds to win the second one. That's where we come up to the 2244. The odds to lose both would be the 52.63 times the 52.63. And then there's a third option, which is of course that we win one and we lose the other one, which has two combinations of happening. Meaning we could win this one times losing this one, or we can lose this one times winning this one. And that's how we come up with these odds, which still adds up to 100%, right? And then if I go over, so, that, so we came out to 22, 22 here so I can say all right let's percentify this percentify add some decimals so the difference difference is going to be equal to this minus this so you can see our odds if I add some decimals and keep on running this should be sometimes positive and sometimes uh, negative and we're basically hovering around that area Let's make this blue and bordered, blue bordered, make this blue and bordered, border blue and border blue. Okay, so there we have it, all right. Now let's think of our expected value, expected value. What did we expect to happen? So we can think about this a few different ways. Let's make this uh, black and white. So we're gonna say 
uh, black and white. So we could say we could count it for each spin since they're independent. And then for every two spins. So in other words, our expected expected value, let's say expected value per spin or for each two spins, we calculated over here. So I'm gonna go back on over and say, all right, let's look at our expected values. We had then for, for each spin, we calculated it to be of course that 0.0526. They're both independent. So we came up to, if we, if we spun it twice, we would expect basically an expected value of course of twice that or 0.1053. So I could say, okay, this is gonna be an expected value each spin of that, which is gonna be adding some decimals. There it is. Now two spins would, one way to think about it is of course twice that, this times two. And so we could say that's gonna be at our uh, 0.1053, right? And so then how many spins did we have? Spins, you know, every, so this one I'm counting every two spins. So this is, I'm sorry, this one I'm counting each spin. We did it 500 times spinning twice every time. So this would, would be 500 times two. We actually spun it a thousand times. And then I'm, if I'm counting every two spins, that's how many times we, we listed here that would be equal this divided by two or the 500 times. So the expected expected value then is of course just this times this and we should get up to the same number with each way we look at it because the spins are independent from each other. So I can then say, all right, let's make this black, black, white, uh, and let's center these ones and then center those and then we'll say let's make this bordered and blue okay so now let's calculate what actually happened so this is going to be the actual results here now we could calculate this for each spin independent from each other but let's try to calculate it as though we're combining them together right so we're going to say we're going to bet on red and what are the outcomes that we can have from the two spins grouped together. Well, we could have uh, win both, we can lose both, or we can win one of the two and, and lose one, lose the other one, which there's two ways that that can happen, right? So I can then select these and say, all right, let's make that a header, home tab, font group, make that um, black, white. Let's, let's center these, center. We want our check over here, which is gonna be the total total as well and so let's make this to, to format paint that over here so this is account this is account if under 18. so so let's see if we can add another a couple other columns i'm going to select this skinny right click and uh, see if i can right click on that it's too skinny to to right click and then we're going to say i want to uh count this one if both of them are uh, over 18. So count if over 18. So do it. And let's do that. And so how can we do that? So now I'm going to do a similar count ifs formula equals count ifs. So here is our argument. So we have the criteria range. We're gonna be picking up just this number as the range and then comma, that gives us the criteria. We're looking for everything that is above 18. So I could say it's gotta be greater than, I'm gonna say the 18. So I could say greater than or equal to 19, but since they're whole numbers, it's faster to say of the 18, I'm gonna to have to put quotations around the text field and then use an and to tie it to the next argument. And then comma, the next argument criteria range, that's gonna be the second one for the criteria range, comma, what's the criteria two? That is gonna be that this also has to be greater than the 18, meaning 19 and above. I once again need to put quotations around the text field for the greater than and tie it together with an and to the next argument, close it up and enter. There we have it. 
Now I can't copy it down because if I double click on it, this cell needs to stay static. So I'm gonna put my cursor in, there's DA4. Here's a D, uh, that's gonna be the DA4, which is right, actually it's DA3, sorry about that, DA3. F4 in the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and the number. Here's a DA3, F4 in the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and the number, making Excel not copy it down when I copy the cell down double click in the cell reference bringing it down so this one had two of them under this one had two of them over and it counted it over here and then if one was under and one was over then that's when it's going to be zero so i could do another one and say count it uh if uh if one is 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 one one is the other but what i what i can do instead is say look at these two ranges here and if you see both of them as uh, zeros, then I can then 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 one is one and one is the other. So maybe I do one more range, right click and insert. And this one, let's let's do this. This is going to be less than eighteen, both less than eighteen, and this will be uh, both both. Uh, this is both less than 18 and this is both greater than greater than 18. Okay. And so this is going to be one less and one greater. Something like that. Right? All right. Hopefully that makes some, uh, hopefully that makes some sense. So now what I'm going to say is, well, let's take a look at these two results. And I want you to count it if both results have a zero. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to say equals count if, count ifs brackets. And I'll pick up this first one and say comma. And the criteria is that it has to be exactly zero. So I'll just type in the zero and then comma. The second one, I want you to take this result and then count it if the second criteria it is also zero and then brackets and enter and so now it counted that first one if i if i double click on it boom so now i should have a one in each of these columns and not have two ones in each of these three here right so this one obviously is less than 18 uh uh and one's over, so it's here. This one has both of them over 18, so it's here. This one has uh, both of them under, so it's here, and so on. All right, let's select these and control shift down, put some brackets around it, and then I'm gonna go back to my scenario over here where I can say what could happen. We could win both, we can lose both, uh, or we can win one. Now I can simply sum these up to see what actually happened, summing this one up, if we win both, that was this one, control shift down, enter. So that could happen. We could lose both equals the sum of these, du -du -du -du, control shift down, or we could win just one of them equals the sum of these, control shift down, enter. That should add up to 500 if we did all of that correctly. So it gives us like our double check. 500. Wow, it actually worked. All right, so now we're going to say, uh, what's the payout? Uh, the payout, uh, if if we win both of them, uh, it's an even payout. So I'll just type in the payouts. We're going to get we're going to get uh, two dollars because we won both times. Or if we lose both of them, we're going to lose two dollars. And if we win one out of the two, we're going to win $1 and then lose $1, which nets out to zero. So that's going to be our payouts for what actually happened. So the totals, so the totals are going to be equal to uh, this times this. And we will copy that across, ba -ba boom. And so, and then we'll sum it up this way equals the sum this way, da -da -da, uh, this way, da -da -da. And then look at the difference. Difference is going to be equal to the to the 
uh, the 53 minus the 46. So we should be pretty close there. I'm gonna double click on it. We should get some negative and some positive because it's, that should be the middle number in essence. All right, hopefully that made some sense. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say uh, brackets and uh, blue. I'll do it here as well, brackets and blue. Now you might say, hey, look, they're all independent. Just to note that, so we might have been able to do this easier, saying bet on red by just saying uh, that what could happen, we could win, we could lose. And then here's the total. And let's make those red uh, bordered and uh, red, white. Uh, and there we have it. Let's make these centered. So, so we could say that how many wins did we have out of the two spins, right? So, so, so I want to count, I want to count the two spins out of both spins, just the ones that are under 18, instead of counting them together, right? So I could say this, so I have a thousand spins this way. So I could say we won, we want to count if, just one if without the F, s this time count if and we have one criteria the range is going to be both of these spins we did it 500 times for two spins or a thousand times for each individual spin control shift down control backspace so i picked up both of those comma what's the criteria it's got to be less than uh 18 i'll just i'll just type i'm sorry less than 19 i'll just type it in this time it's got to be less than 19 and I'm going to need brackets or quotations around the text and a dollar and, a, and an and to tie it together. Boom. So there's out of all of them. What about the losses? Well, we could do it this way. We did it a thousand times if we count both of those columns because we had 500 two spins each uh, minus this and that would come out to the sum of 1000. But I like to calculate it again so i get my double check instead of doing like a plug there so i'm going to say this will be count uh if tab once again the criteria range is going to be here here control shift down control backspace and then comma what's the criteria these are the ones that are greater than this time greater than 18 which will be 19 and above and then I need to put quotations around this, quotes and quotes, and then tie it together to the next argument with an and, close it up, and that comes out to a thousand total. So now what's gonna be the payout? The payout per game is of course just one if we win, negative one if we lose, and that would give us a total of, for each game, 480 times one, and this would be 569 times one, which totals out to a sum, which should match exactly to this sum, right? Because that's just because the games are independent. So I just, so this whole thing is just to point out that we could think of the odds of having, what would happen, what are the odds of having two rules? And then also kind of think about how we can analyze the probability from different, you know, perspectives, which hopefully gives us a better grasp of the concept is the general idea. So I'm going to put some brackets around this. Let's put some blue. Hopefully that wasn't too wacky or weird, uh, but, and gave us some tools to use here. Let's do the spell check is okay. All right, let's leave it at that.